Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about the mythical Pokemon of the Sinnoh region. And specifically, if they are going to be distributed via mystery gift events, or if they are going to be coded straight into the game and available for all players to get at any point in time. This is going to be an interesting discussion for Ilka, the developers of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, because it's going to be a change from the originals if they choose to just code them in. We've seen some interesting signs already as to what they're going to do, but I wanted to discuss it in detail here. So with that being said, let's jump straight into things. Now, for those of you who played the original games, Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and even Platinum, there were a ton of mythical Pokemon that were locked behind mystery gift events, meaning there were items and there were events and locations coded into the games that you just could not access through normal gameplay. Some of the more iconic ones was the Arceus event, uh, which was never given out. It was an Azure Flute where you could take it to Spear Pillar and then you could summon Arceus and you could fight him and you could catch him and do this whole thing. There was D uh, there was Darkrai, who you had to get the, uh, the hotel key for to go in, speak with the guy, be transported to his island and then eventually you could face him. There was Cresselia who was a roamer. She was in the game, but interestingly enough, she was the only one who was. There were others like this too. Shaman was one that you couldn't get without a mystery gift event. Manaphy was locked behind owning a completely different game. You had to own Pokemon Ranger, and the weirdest part about it is you had to own a copy of Pokemon Ranger which hadn't previously had Manaphy transferred. That means it was one Manaphy egg, which is what you got from that game, and then you could send it into your actual version of Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum and eventually hatch it into a Manaphy. That's also how you got Fion. But it was one Manaphy egg per copy. It wasn't per save file, it wasn't per system, per copy. So to find a Manaphy from Pokemon Ranger today is incredibly difficult. It's one of the rarest Pokemon to find because Pokemon Ranger is a game of limited quantity. There are no more production of Pokemon Ranger, the game in existence. The copies that are out there are it. So Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum were famous. They are renowned for having so many Pokemon restricted to mystery gift events. But that brings up an interesting question. Are they going to do the same thing in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl? Will Pokemon like Darkrai and Arceus and Shaman, are they going to be locked behind Mystery Gift or from other video games? Who knows? Maybe to get Arceus in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, you need to own Legends Arceus. Who knows? There's a lot of things that they could do, but it's going to be interesting to see how they approach it. And we have a piece of evidence already that shows that they are at least changing their, their approach a little bit. If you're an early adopter of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, I believe the cutoff is February of 2022. So if you get the game before then, you are going to be able to get a Manaphy through Mystery Gift. This was announced a couple weeks back. I forget if it was with the new trailer or if it was further back. I believe it was with the new trailer that you'll be able to get this Pokemon as an early adopter's gift if you get the game on launch and then up to February of next year, up to pretty much around the time of Legends Arceus's release. Now, this is interesting for a variety of reasons. The biggest one, of course, is that this is a difference in distribution method. Manaphy, like I said before, came from Pokemon Ranger. Now you're getting it from Mystery Gift. So this is actually a Pokemon that's been added as a Mystery Gift giveaway. This is new. This is different. But it tells us that they are willing at least to make changes. Now, with Manaphy, it makes quite a bit of sense. You're not going to say, oh, get Pokemon Ranger. They're not going to release a remake of Pokemon Ranger. They're not going to make it so, oh, Legends, you can get Manaphy. That's a little silly. Manaphy's not the biggest, most impressive mythical Pokemon on the roster. It's, it's, he's a nice Pokemon, but you know, it's Manaphy. You get the Fion too. It's cool, but it shows that they're willing to at least do that under certain circumstances. So what about Pokemon like Darkrai? What about Pokemon like Shaman? These are mythicals that not only had a special item that you needed to use to actually gain access to them through Mystery Gift, but it unlocked islands, new locations, different mini storylines in the games themselves. And the criticism towards Pokemon has been ever since then that if you don't get these events when they first come out, this is content that is locked away from you unless you, of course, use some kind of cheating device if you're running it as a ROM, etc. But if you're playing it normally on a DS, this is an event, this is a piece of Pokemon history that is gone. It doesn't exist anymore through normal means. 
We've all experienced these games. We've played Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. We've experienced these events. I remember as a kid getting the Darkrai, the Shaman, the Arceus. I believe Shaman was able to be gotten in the United States from Toys R Us, I want to say. I have vivid memories of all this stuff. But it's ultimately a question that Ilka will have to address. And I think, based on everything that I've heard, I think they're probably going to go the route of still doing Mystery Gift, even though, in my opinion, they should just code them in. And there's a couple reasons why I think that. Now, before I go any further, I just want to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, subscribing is free. You can unsubscribe at any time, and it would really do a lot to show me that you're enjoying these Pokemon videos and that you want to see more in the future, because there is a lot to talk about with these games. So that being said, let's get back into things. Now, before I get into the reasons why I think it's going to happen, I think it's important to note some context. At least from my perspective, it seems that Pokemon in recent generations has been moving away from this. And it might not be intentional, it might just be that we haven't really been seeing a lot of mythical Pokemon integration into the games as of late, the mythicals haven't been that much of a big deal, and in recent games there haven't been all of these well laid out events for these Pokemon. One of the most famous ones of course is Volcanion in Pokemon X and Y, He just you just got him in Mystery Gift. Such an interesting mythical, uh, had an interesting movie, it was not the best uh, animated movie Pokemon's ever put out. But he's an interesting looking Pokemon, and he's a water fire type, which is a rare combo for typings wise. I believe he's one of the only water fire types, if not the only one, unless I'm like forgetting someone, and you guys will remind me of that in the comments. But he didn't have any story, he didn't have any fluff added to him, he was just given through Mystery Gift, got a movie, and that's how it went. And that's kind of how they've been using Mythicals recently, is that they have been strictly promotional material. So that might lead you to believe and based on the fact that there were a bunch of mythical Pokemon and legendaries that you could catch in the Crown Tundra DLC of Sword and Shield for the first time ever with no events necessary, that they're kind of relaxing themselves from doing these big hyped things for mythicals and legendaries as much. But then again, we come back to the games that we are remaking. Diamond and Pearl focused heavily on these mythical Pokemon. There were specific areas of the map designed for these Pokemon and for these events. And I think that it would give Nintendo some really nice promotional material for the months leading up to Legends Arceus's release, and eventually after that, to have a bunch of these events to let players play through. Having Darkrai come out in a certain time, having Shaman come out at another time, this is, it's good material to advertise and sell the games, and they have remakes to do it. It's not as if they have to code in brand new areas to go to, it's not as if they have to make additions to a game where in which they weren't there before, this is a feature that already exists. Existed. And considering all we've seen, they are trying to stay pretty consistent with what the original messaging of the game was. They are trying to stay pretty faithful while still updating some quality of life features. HMs look like they're coming back. We don't know in what form, but we've seen rock climb in the overworld, so one would have to assume that they're sticking with some of these DS era features, and Mystery Gift and Mystery Gift events for Mythical Pokemon is one of those features. Now, I don't think it should be the way it is. I think you should allow players to unlock Darkrai. You should allow players to travel to the flower fields and find Shaman. I think that's what they're called. Uh, you should be able to just get Manaphy. I know that it's a mystery gift, but I would love Manaphy to have some content too, even though it wasn't in the originals. Arceus, you should be able to have some kind of encounter with him. These are central pieces of the Pokemon lore that they're letting players explore, and they're essentially locking them behind timed walls. And if you don't get that timing correctly, if you're a player that comes to these games late, if you're a younger person who enjoys playing Pokemon and you're not really keeping up to date with when events run and you're not really on your phone looking on the internet as much at these things, you might miss them. If you come to this game in a couple years and you're like, oh, I'm going to pick up Pokemon again. I loved Diamond and Pearl as a kid. Let's play Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl on the Switch. These Pokemon just aren't there for you unless you do a trade or you have a friend who had it, but you don't get to experience that event. And I think that's always been the big fault with these mythical events is that you want, at least I would think, to have as many people playing through them as possible because they're some of the most interesting and coolest parts of these games. The lore that gets added onto, the really cool environments that you get to see, the, you get to see the prowess and the prominence and the power of mythical Pokemon in this world. And to have those things locked behind something so arbitrary like a mystery gift event, it's just never made a ton of sense to me. So that's why I think they're going to keep mystery gift events, but it's also why I think they shouldn't. So with that being said, I would love to know what you guys think. Do you like these mystery gift events? Do you think they should be done the way they were handled in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum? Or do you think 
as I do, that every player should be able to do them at any point, and it should be save file to save file. I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comments section below, and be sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the topic and you want to see more. With that being said, I have been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.